Coming up, Ben Simmons, according to his agent, is 100% healthy ahead of the upcoming season, and Trendon Watford returns on a one-year deal. Why head coach Jordy Fernandez will need to manage these two players in key ways heading into the upcoming season. We dive in, coming up next. You are Locked On Nets, your daily Brooklyn Nets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ah, yes, my friends, it is the Locked On Nets podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team, the Brooklyn Nets, every single day. He's Doug Nori. I'm Adam Marmbrick. We thank you, as always, for making us your first listen of the day. We are 100% free on all those great platforms. And let you know, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms, they do apply. And Doug, while Team USA gets a little bit of action under their belt against Canada, while Summer League is on the precipice of getting started for the NBA out in Vegas, we take a look at that age-old story of Ben Simmons and getting ready to play healthy basketball. He's 100%, baby. 100%. I mean, wash, rinse, repeat. You can set your clock to this. You can you can just you can set your calendar, roll over the day, and just say that like the guy is 100. And like while you know it it's not great making light of a guy who's like had a bunch of injury problems, uh, it just becomes this thing for at least another season that we will end up talking about when it comes to Ben Simmons because when the guy is your highest paid player on a team, and when a guy has a history like Ben Simmons does, yep. you know, and while he's still here. It is relevant, even though there's times where it's like increasingly irrelevant. So when um, his his agent comes out and says that he's 100 percent going into the season, it's one of those things where I mean, we've trained ourselves and scarred us. We got enough scar tissue up on this for ourselves to be like, hey, <laughs> we don't need to get too excited about this. At well, I mean, you don't have to get excited at all about it. But at the same time, it's like the guy has. At one time, been so good that 100% Ben Simmons would be a needle mover, but we just have years on years on years of just like not being able to totally trust that 100% really means anything tangible. Well, and also that 100% Ben Simmons this year doesn't mean the same thing that it would have meant last year or the year prior, right? right now that yeah. the Nets organization has made the commitment to going into the rebuild direction, it, it's as you say, no, not something to speak light of when it comes to the injuries that Simmons has no. gone through trying to get back healthy, but it is something to chuckle over that now, finally, if he were to be healthy, let alone being in a position where you've cleared out all the superstars and maybe there's less pressure, now you're at the point where if you're the Brooklyn Nets, the last thing you want, maybe in some ways, is a healthy Ben Simmons on his $40 million contract coming in and going, I'm in a contract here, baby. I want to show the league that I can still play and mess up a couple of different levels that we're going to talk about, mess up maybe the development of some other guys on this roster, mess up some cohesion, and then let's be brass tacks, mess up some wins and losses that end up impacting where you stand in the draft. Though we understand the Nets roster is going in a direction where it seems unlikely any one or multiple players are going to impact where they land when it comes to next year's draft class. It's just unfortunate that if, and this is a big if because the reports come from his agent, if he is 100% healthy, you you almost do feel bad for him that it comes at a point when the Nets organization couldn't care any less about having a healthy body like his. Uh, yeah, and I and I think, too, like the days of like us trust again, trusting that he is actually 100% and going to get back to normal are pretty much gone. I think that like even, you know, even some of the tenor around coming out of his camp around like just being super bullish, even that was tempered a little bit, you know, yeah. saying he's 100% is – you know, short of like them talking about him, like he's a total reclamation project, which is agents that are obviously never going to do. It's one of these things where, you know, I think we just have, we just have so much history in knowing that that can't really believe that be believed. And I know sometimes it drives fans, fans nuts because, you know, you'll see workout videos and you'll see kind of rehab videos. I, none of which ever include like playing basketball, by the way, it's uh, it's yeah. all just, it's typically just like weight room and stuff. And you got, and you feel for the guy on some levels, because obviously there's been like a massive, massive fall from grace to, I mean, almost irrelevant. And we talk often about how like sort of the love, the opposite of love isn't hate. It's indifference. Yeah. And we are, increasingly close to just indifferent territory with Simmons. Now, is that a time for like the ultimate comeback? Maybe, maybe we often have not heard other 
sort of like self-deprecating quotes from him that would have it appear that like he understands that like it's kind of over or excuse me lower that he needs to build himself all the way back up and i think that's sometimes what drives fans nuts but there's no denying that if it like was actually true it would be a material difference on the court it's just i, I we, we totally understand why fans would honestly just to kind of roll your eyes at this like and it's again relevant makes 40 million dollars you're the highest paid player in the team if you right. it, there's no other no other team on the nets on the lockdown podcast network that just never talks about their highest paid player for weeks and weeks and weeks and <laughs> right. weeks on the year right. like this is like just go to listen to all the other ones i guarantee they're talking about the highest paid player a lot and that's just not the case with ben simmons by the way interestingly enough i'll tie it into one i think you're right about ben simmons and this isn't a knock on him but when you when you keep coming back to the sound bites of the player that i know that i am what i'm capable of and getting back there and then the injuries derail that there's never been a point where he has said yeah listen like i need to reclamate my career no. and who i am as a basketball player it's always been i know what i am i know what i can do and, and guess what everybody at this level of of athleticism as doug and i both know personally you don't acknowledge that there's a, a deficiency in what you're capable of doing it's probably a big part of the mental game that being said it changes your willingness to engage with this in a different way because it feels like Ben Simmons, agent, even the Nets for, for a certain stretch were always selling you on a bill of goods that was never going to come to fruition. One other thing that I think is interesting about this is they just had um, the Sadiq Bay contract just got given out, a player that's not going to see the court in this upcoming season. And the first thing I thought when that what happened was, boy, fast forward to a year when the Nets don't have Ben Simmons $40 million on the books, yeah. they would dream on this type of scenario a guy that's not going to see the court and impact the play in any way, shape, or form and puts a little bit of money on the salary cap? Oh, baby. So there, there was that part of me where even in this moment, when you don't care about Ben Simmons and what he's going to be for the Brooklyn Nets and you're just waiting for the money to come off, you actually do still go, oh, you still had to stub our toe, though, on what our new agenda might be from a roster building and from a salary building standpoint for the Nets going forward. Dude, I, we never talked about the Sadiq Bay thing, but I had the exact same feeling. I was yeah. like, if they just were one year removed, and there's always be opportunities like this, but if they were just one year removed from the Simmons contract, that's just eating up so much of the cap, which probably ends up for this year being a good thing. Like again, yeah. eating up your cap with your most expensive player who never plays, like that is kind, that is actually the dream situation. Um, you know, one one thing short, I mean, the next dream situation is eating up with just guys who could be reclamation projects who definitely won't play right right <laughs> right like that's the next best yeah. thing but if you are tanking a 40 million dollar plus ben simmons is not the worst guy to have on the team we're going to talk a little bit about the trend the waterford contract uh kind of a little bit of the stuff that you see guys and i talked about talk about some of the development track for some of these other guys as well we'll get into that here in a second First, going to tell you about our friends over at game time. Look, it's summer. It's MLB season. You want to go to games during the summer. It's the heat. It's the ballpark. It's all the stuff that goes along with it. Game time is going to make it the cheapest and easiest way for you to get to the baseball park this summer. And you know that if you're in New York, there's just all kinds of opportunities for baseball. I mean, you're never going to believe this. There's Washington Nationals at Mets tickets starting at $4 over at game time. Getting a little more expensive if you want to go Mets, Yankee, Subway Series uh, a little bit later in July. That's going to start at $45. Still an incredible deal. Just some of what you're going to get over there on game time look game time makes this so easy not just for sports either i mean theater comedy whatever uh concert whatever you're going to go to game time's got you covered they got last minute deals can save you up to 60 percent off they got flash deals zone deals they got all in pricing got seat views so you know exactly what you're going to see when you sit down at the ballpark or wherever else get started on game time by downloading the game time app create an account use the code locked on nba for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an, uh, an account and redeem the code locked on nba on the game time app for twenty dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed all right so as we continue today's locked on nets episode we ask you the question are you watching fox sports on espn or on your tv all day and if you feel like you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting why don't you make the switch over to locked on sports today it's a free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for you every day that brings you the biggest stories without all the screaming locked on sports today brings you the can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube and on the free amazon fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network and when you know it it's your team and it's every day 
Something else that's every day is news about players coming back to Brooklyn. Trendon Watford, this was the one player who could have gone to market, maybe could have seen someone make an offer that the Nets would have to match. Instead, he comes back on the $2.7 million qualifying offer from Brooklyn. Trendon Watford will play with the Nets for the upcoming season. And in a perfect world, I mean, I want to talk about it from a roster standpoint, but I will say the Nets took a chance on a whole bunch of players a year ago. Trendon Watford was one that hit. Now, this is the opportunity really for Watford, as we heard other players, even like now no longer rookie by his standards, Noah Clowney say, this is my opportunity. Trenton Watford is going to get big minutes opportunity here going forward. That should set him up in theory for maybe the first big payday of his career a year from now. Yeah, again, Yosi Goslin and I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but um, he was he admitted that just you know in terms of like just knowing Watford's game, it wasn't going to be exactly the same. Uh, but you know, just kind of just got a little bit more just into the salary structure and sort of like the options going forward and like sort of what could happen after this season. I think we kind of saw this coming, although we got you know when we first said that they were going to resign Watford, we got some like weird pushback from some people that were I'm not going to say who, but like that were tied into the situation that said he definitely wouldn't be back. And I was, I, yeah. that was always a head scratcher to me uh, about that. So victory. Lap on that we one, like it was a no brainer, right? Sorry. Not to, like we felt it was the no brainer. We called it a no brainer back. Yeah. We called it a no brainer. Then multiple yeah. people were like, no, he's not going to come back. I was like, what? I don't know. This, like, this doesn't make sense. Anyway, our brains. I'm, yeah, look, look, pat your, raise your hand, turn around, pat yourself on the back, buddy. We, we did it. Um, so with Watford though, you know, beyond just the contract piece, it does very much seem like there should be like a huge role for him this year. I, the Nets, as the, as the roster currently stands, let's assume Cam J and DFS make, make it through, uh, make it through the summer here. Actually, still on the roster, you know, TBD on that. But this Nets team, I mean, they are so devoid of guys who can really handle the ball at all that, yeah. and it's not like Watford, some like you know traditional point guard or anything. But we saw Point Watford at times last season, especially late. He's he can he's malleable just enough in that not really good not great at anything but probably not bad in any one particular area except for maybe just like straight line speed mm -hmm. the i i just i actually feel like he could be like the nets sixth or seventh man let's say simmons just is, can't really play like he i think he's like sixth or seventh guy on this on this roster as a current saints just because he can do multiple things yeah like they have very they have almost nothing in, in the way of guards right now they have cam thomas schroeder and Jake milton right that's like essentially the guard room and that's barely holding it together and and after that it's just kind of wings and guys who are probably just going to kind of run off pin down screens and kind of just stand, stand weak side and strong side like i, I don't really know where else they're going to get ball handling. So I actually see massive opportunity for Watford here and like not to bleed into jo uh, Josh Lloyd space here, but I think there's like actually a lot of fantasy upside for him too, just because of the way he sort of just can compile stats with his profile. And it's funny by the end of last season, I agree with you, obviously in terms of the, the ball handling void that the Nets roster still has even transitioning into this new era last season for the Nets, you know, played in 63 games, only started two, but I mean, if you had, rewound this back again different type of roster but he comes out of portland averaging 18 and 19 minutes a game and then only plays 13 and a half minutes for brooklyn a year ago and we were kind of a little head scratching on it there were times early in the year when it looked like well okay this is why you're kind of restricting him he can play out of control then as we as we talk about and always try to frame it then you get down to kind of the back end of the season when the games don't matter anymore and you're not playing some of these veteran guys and watford shows off the 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 every aspect that can impact every part of the game for you. The perimeter shooting, which they needed desperately when you didn't have certain players on the court and available due to injuries. The ball handling piece and maybe this relationship with Cam Thomas going all the way back to LSU. That becomes fascinating to me because when you mentioned that, that guard room and the idea of being on the floor, and while I think this upcoming season is about Cam Thomas and developing his all-around game, just having the option to get him off ball. We met, you know, we saw Dennis Schroeder be able to do this when he came in last year, but where's the second option, right? How do you get to the next player on that list that affords you to have someone else bring the ball up the court and create different offensive sets? I, Trendon Watford, if he can play under control, to me is the, <laughs> to tie it back to Ben Simmons, like the Ben Simmons light with outside shooting, the Ben Simmons healthy with the ability to take a shot type of role that you always thought he could have been it's like superstars kevin durant kyrie irving and then if ben simmons can be this player for them oh watch out that to me is the same thing for trendon watford in this role 
for a Cam Thomas, Jalen Wilson, Noah Clowney, Nicholas Claxton. There's a big part of that I want to get to here in terms of these two players and who you want to have on the court. That, to me, is the role that he can try to carve out for himself here. And ideally, you dedicate 20 minutes to him plus, right? I mean, 25 minutes to him. I can't see a world where you go into this season thinking, when, be- when excuse me, trying to Watford comes off the bench, we'll see how he performs and if he earns more minutes for him. I start the season by trying to give him significant minutes and role here. Yeah, I I, I don't give him, I, I don't think you're probably doing this, but just to clarify, I actually don't make a Simmons comp with him in the sense that I actually don't think their games are all that similar. I, I get why you would, I get why we would say it. And I probably have said it in the past where it's like, yeah. he's kind of tall. He's like a little hard to define. You can't really put him in like a strict, like NBA box. Right? right. And so like, he doesn't fit into like sort of any traditional mold and that's neither the Simmons. And so that's why you kind of sometimes when it's like, Hey, tall, kind of athletic, doesn't do certain things. Well, does do so. I mean, but you know, Watford can shoot, you know, where Simmons can't Simmons court all, vision right? is can't court shoot, vision is like, <laughs> yeah. Like Simmons's vision is light years ahead of, of, of Watford, even of when Simmons is like down bad injury wise. So I don't see them like comps, like on an archetype level, except that it's like hard to sort of define what exactly, what position they exactly are. Right. And I think mm-hmm. like that's, and I think like that um is, is, pr- is pretty salient, but in terms of just like what the nets need, I, he's like kind of the perfect guy for the version of the Nets going into this season in that probably not so great, not so good that he like impacts your winning, right. but is versatile enough to not have the team look like a total dumpster fire, which is going to at times, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, the on-court stuff can at least be somewhat manageable, which I think the Nets, actually, I really think the Nets are going to struggle with this at times by design, but like, there's just going to be times where you're, we're going to be watching on the court and be like, Whoa, Oh baby. Like this is, this is really, really tough. So I think from that standpoint, Watford like chance to be part of the team. It's just like, I actually think it's really underrated at this point. And yeah, yeah, like we said with him, we said with James Johnson, like, he likes to explore the studio space a little bit. It gets a little, it gets a little, you know, a little crazy at times, but like, who cares? Who cares? And I, I think that like, if you can sort of like dial in some of the things he does well, of all the guys on the nets that we could look at the end of the year and be like, wow, that was like a pretty big step forward for him. I, I outside of the, like the clownies, I'm not really counting him. Right. Where the expectations were low. Let me put it this way. Where the expectations were on the lower side mm-hmm. and he they came out like with a significantly higher value. I actually see him as probably the guy. Yeah, well, we'll talk about tomorrow on our uh, summer league preview. I got some bullish sentiments around one Derek Whitehead, but I agree with you. It's like this is the guy that comes in. Hey, you're here to fill minutes. You got the one year contract. You can do some things. There's not a ton of pressure. And by the way. For as you mentioned, it's going to look clunky sometimes. A young roster, you're going to turn around and look at this team and realize that Nicholas Claxton's the oldest guy on the court for stretch, for stretches of games, depending on how things shake out with a couple more of these veterans here. So it's going to be a lot of 22 and 23 year olds running around, looking really fun and exciting at times, and then maybe, as we've seen with Watford, looking a little clunky. Last note on him, I will say, per Crafted NBA, he does have a, a box creation rating on an estimated 100 per uh, possessions, number of open shots created for teammates he's in he creates 4.5 per 100 that's the 73rd percentile in the nba sample size is small doesn't get on the court a ton but if i'm thinking about the other guys specifically like cam thomas or like a nicholas claxton maybe shooters great ball creators or non-shooters and guys that are running the floor noah Clowney. i like the idea of seeing trendon watford this summer getting in the mix and showing you that he can do some more of those things and play a little bit more under control we'll have to keep an eye on that but coming up here in a second What does it mean as we go into this season for Ben Simmons with Trendon Watford, with all these young players? And does Jordy Fernandez have to make the dedicated effort to avoid having Ben Simmons drag down all our good vibes? We'll get into that to close out the show in just one moment. All right. As we talk about the not the lot, excuse me, the locked on nets episode, which is today or happening right now. I'm fine. And also about summer league coming up and what it's going to mean for this team going forward, Doug. Ben Simmons being healthy or 100%, even if he is, let's take him at his word. Let's take his agent at his word. We already know going back to last year that he and Nick Claxton cannot share the floor. Now, did the sample size of Ben Simmons and Cam Thomas show you some things that maybe are interesting? Of course they are. I'm of the mind that if I'm Jordy Fernandez, I'm looking at everybody else and then saying, 
I'm going to treat you a little bit like I like we treated Trenton Watford a year ago. Yeah, you'll get you'll you'll get in when the opportunities present themselves. But I cannot put you in the starting lineup coming into a developmental season for all of our young players. I'm not saying that he's a detriment because the, the court vision and the passing, those things really matter. But there are so many things that break down around having a non-shooting player like him on the floor and one who we've seen, maybe it's the health, but who we've seen was not the same defensive player that he was three, four years ago in terms of having an impact like we think about a Nicholas Claxton. Yeah, I think that that's going to be the most interesting subplot, right? Going into the season is like what the roster, what the starting lineup is day one. I, I yeah. think that Simmons probably ends up starting just because like, who cares? Um, and I care. Just... I wouldn't do it. I, I don't see how you can. Yeah, like, I, I know. I just this is I can dedicate. I don't know. I, sorry. Not, go, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll fill back in, but no, it's okay. I like, I, I just think that. Well, I should just go ahead and then I'll respond to what you're saying because you seem impassioned about it. And I, I, I have a firm thought, but um, there's a chance that it just kind of sidewinds off yours. I mean, listen, the, my thinking is if there's a world where you can make Ben Simmons, and we've talked about this before, trade deadline, half a contract viable, then other team wants to take a flyer on. Great. The best way to do that is to provide a concise, small and successful sample size for him. And if he's healthy and ready to play, great. You know, we want to put you in a quality spot to look good. And then even if you're not going to move them at all, we just want you to look good going to your contract year, right? You want to go make money. We want to go ahead and put you in a good spot here. <laughs> what I will say is from a development of the young roster, I just don't see the value in putting him into the mix because he's deficient in certain areas of his game. If he, if he was an all around player that was coming off of all of these injuries and didn't even have the same court vision, didn't even have the same defensive upside. We talk about a lot. Okay, fine but you're going to serve the agenda of Cam Thomas getting better of Jalen Wilson. As he gets his minutes, Noah Clowney, Nicholas Claxton, like all these things matter. Instead, you're a player that you look at and go, well, there's a handful of combinations that don't work. So now we're going to go into a season splitting up Nicholas Claxton and Ben Simmons minutes. No, like I, I got Nicholas Claxton back on a four year contract. He's 24, 25 years old. Like he's one of the focal points of this roster. Ben Simmons cannot get in the way of whatever Jordy Fernandez believes is the developmental track for this young team. Yeah, it's always funny to me, too, where, like, uh, fans are often quick to sort of ring in with almost no information on this, by the way, um, yeah. about, like, how other people on the team and stuff feel about him. Now, I can mm. probably make guesses, yeah. but I am not positive. And I always go back to, like, some things that were said a few years ago when they were, like, I've mentioned this many times, but they were asking players, like, you know, if you wanted to plan, I think it was, like, a party or something, a night out, like, who would you call him? Every They're single like the guy with all the thing. money. <laughs> Well, yeah, but they all said Simmons. And I always thought like, oh, you know, I wonder, like you wouldn't say that That's if you just course. hated a guy's guts, right? Yeah. Like, and it's not just the money thing. Now, maybe it is, maybe it is, Um, but it never struck me as that. So I, I do think that that part is probably a little bit overblown. Now, the part where you're saying about like curbing development, I I, I can totally hear that. I, Cause there's some, there's some segment of folks out there that just want them like to not even be on the bench this year. And I could probably yeah. hear that too. I don't think the Nets will do that because, I've been wrong about this stuff before, by the way, but I, I don't think the Nets will do it because one, I think it's going to send a message that they don't want to like, that they don't want to send, which is you, you, you don't do something, you get sent home and you're not part of the team. I think right. they're willing to like live with whatever the perceived downside of having Simmons around is. So I don't think they would ever really do that. I think that would just be like a bad, maybe a bad look like NBA wise. So I don't think that's really on the table from a development standpoint. Honestly, there's just like such a good chance that like the injury stuff just kind of solve this solves this for them mm -hmm. that it just doesn't end up ever being a thing. And if it's like, Hey, if he starts day one and he plays, plays some games and it looks okay, it's not the worst thing in the world. The guy we saw last year is like not putting them over any kind of like non tanking hump. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm not even sure, you know, back to like his old days, if like they would, it would even make that much of a huge difference just based on the rest of this roster. So I just think there's like no risk to do it. And if it looks awful, then maybe they make a change. But yeah, that's preseason and day one starting lineup with him. If he is healthy, will be fascinating. I think he starts no matter what. But I mean, I can I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to watch. And I, I guess the point I, one thing I will say is if to your point about the Nets organization and wanting to help a player be, you know, be the best version of himself, recover from this injury, the Nets have always done right by players, at least from a perceptual standpoint, a PR standpoint, I, I would almost also look at it and go here, Ben, no pressure. 
We're going to have our starting five. And when you come in off the bench and look 100% healthy and fresh and athletic, it's just it's going to start. That's the slow churn of, oh, is Ben Simmons? Is he is he finally healthy for the first time in years? OK, great. He's been playing 15 minutes a night. Now he's playing 20 and you start to build up that that sense of where it's going here. And listen, can I can I tell you that? talking about the development of a young of a young team and a young roster while still sitting here and saying Dennis Schroeder is going to be in the starting backcourt with Cam Thomas potentially if it's not going to be Ben Simmons yeah there's a give and take there obviously but from a possession over possession consistency i would hedge my hedge myself on putting in a player that even at 100% i know has the potential to unravel these young players potentially the, the upside is how he sees the court and sets them up for easy success. The downside is getting hacked in the lane, going to the free throw line, disjointing offensive possessions, possessions where he stands kind of off to the side because he doesn't have any real intent on going towards the basket. All of these things maybe go away based on being healthy. But as we said back at the top, Ben Simmons and being in 100% health are two things that have been mentioned a lot in recent years, but have never actually come to fruition. So I, I, I'm optimistic and hopeful for him as an individual player. But from a net standpoint, I'd be going in every direction away from players that do not have long-term futures with this team. Yeah, and I think, like I said, I, some of this might just solve itself. Um, I don't disagree with you on a high level. I think that, like, you know, there's plenty of reason to kind of keep it around, keep him around. There's reason, like you said, to to not. I think a lot of this will probably depend on just how he looks, like, in the preseason. Like, I think we'll probably I, – I got to tell you right now, I think, like, yes. we'll know by the end of the preseason, like, what our, the, what our firm take on this is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think now it's just speculation. But going but round back just to one more point before we get out of here is talking yep. about like the Nets trying to do right by players. I think for the most part, that has been very true. I'm sure someone's going to say, well, what about Kyrie? I hear that. Yep. Like, um, you know, I think that was like a all sides kind of just didn't do great with that um situation. But I'm just I'm just already just trying to get out ahead here of like what someone's going to say, like. You know, it's like because I was gonna make the oh. joke. I was gonna say they do right by players because they trade them to whatever team they want. It's like, oh, right. like whatever team Man, they want to go, they get traded to. Was... But then I was like, ah, with Kyrie, they didn't. So I'm sure that someone's gonna come in and say, you know, hey, you know, they didn't treat Kyrie. I think there were elements that are that that are like that are completely true. And I think that there's, I think that was a, a sort of give and take that the Nets didn't want to be part of anymore. So anyway, just yeah, put a little asterisk on that one comment for sure. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, of yeah. course. Okay. But listen, we're here for it. Feel free to get in on it over on. All right, we're going to get out of here tomorrow. Look, we're going to do a big, uh, what to expect from oh, summer league thing. Going to talk yeah. a lot of Derek Whitehead. Going to talk Dariq about some of the other guys that are going to be part of the, um, a no part of this roster is sort of like what we're going to be looking for starting yeah, Friday night when summer league action tips off. Cause there's going to be some pretty interesting storylines coming out of the nets. Uh, so make sure you're here for that. Make sure you subscribe to locked on nets, wherever you listen to podcasts and YouTube as well. In this bright future, you cannot forget your past. Why that is William Marley. <laughs> One of the all time great poets. Yeah. We'll be back again. I thought it was the Fuji's. We'll be back again tomorrow. Ugh. Talking more uh, Brooklyn Nets basketball, 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 basketball. Yeah.